The following program is sponsored by the Hope Team, friends and partners of Keith Nix Ministries. Coming up on The Lift with Keith and Margie Nix. You've got to have such faith that even if there's a season in the year, even if there's some weeks in the year, even if there's some moments, even if there's some circumstances in the year to come that, that don't look favorable, they don't feel favorable, looks like everything's falling apart, you're still going to stand and say, I'm just going to stand on Jeremiah 17, verse 8. My trust is in the Lord. My security is the Lord. So even in the heat, even in the heat of the moment, the heat of the day, even in the storms of life, and when there's drought all around me, I am not going to stop yielding fruit. Come on, somebody lift your hand and say, it's my fruitful year, and I'm going to reap a harvest of God's blessing no matter what the circumstances are. Hello and welcome to The Lift. I'm Keith Nix, and I'm delighted that you're with me today for this broadcast. I believe the message is going to set you on fire with hope, expectation, and I hope you'll receive it with great joy. 2019 is the fruitful year. I'm declaring that. That's the word of the Lord that came to me. I'm declaring it over my life, over my family's life, over the Lift Church, over everyone God privileges me to minister to, which right now includes you. I just declare in the name of Jesus, this is your fruitful year. Seed you planted, good seed, it's time for that harvest to come in. Now, if you've got bad seed in the ground, you need to pray for a crop failure. <laughs> you, need to, you need to repent and say, God, forgive me, and I'm asking you for mercy. But I know many of you, you've got some really good seed, and the enemy's trying to wear your patience down. He's trying to get you to give up just before the harvest. Somebody listening to me, you've been wondering why things have been so hard lately, and you've been fighting a battle, not just physical, but I mean, mentally, you're just feeling the stress and even discouragement and depression trying to, to get in. You're wondering what's going on. You love the Lord. You're walking with the Lord. You're, you're doing your best to give and to pray and to fast or, and to study the Word. You're just all in for Jesus, but it seems like nothing's working for you. It seems like everything's going wrong in your life. I want to encourage you. I want you to take all that you've been going through as a good sign that the enemy is aware that you are close to your reaping point. You are close to the harvest and he wants you to give up. You see, man sows, God gives the increase, but man has to reap it. You've got to reap it. And I believe the message you're about to hear is going to help give you some principles on how to do that, encourage you, strengthen your faith. Stay with me. I'm coming back at the end. I want to pray with you, and I'd love to hear from you this week. All the information comes up on the screen, and I want you to, to just write us, call us, email us, do, do something. Let us know you're watching, and, and let us know how we can pray for you. Let's go in the Word right now, and let's get our faith built up in Jesus' name. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. And let me ask you, who does the sowing? The man did, right? We do. Who did the sowing? He scattered the seed in the ground. And then who does the increasing? First Corinthians chapter three, verse eight. Said, said, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Hallelujah. So man plants, God increases. Verse 28, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full, grown, full grain in the head. 
But when the grain ripens, verse 29, can you read it aloud with me? When the grain ripens, when the grain is fully formed, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now, who puts in the sickle? The man put in the sickle. So watch it. Man planted. God increased it. Man harvested it. Mm. We'll go through that again. You say, oh, I know that. Well, we got we to know it in, in our, our life. We sow. God gives increase. Then we reap it. In other words, I've got to put effort in the sowing. And I also must put effort in the reaping. I have no control over the increasing, but I put effort in the sowing. I put effort in the reaping and God gives the increase. Hallelujah. And the harvest is mine. Somebody say, amen. Now you that lifted your hand and you said you planted a garden. When you planted the garden, you had to do some work, right? You had to till the ground. You had to put the seed there. If you're tomatoes, you got the tomato plant, you put it in. You, you put the, those rods there uh, and tie it up so it can grow up straight and, and green beans, etc. So you do that work and you put it in there and, and then you, you watch over it and, and water it, pray for rain or irrigate. You do what you need to do, making sure that things are going as they should. If, if, there's, if there's beast of the field, you know, little raccoons or fox or deer that are going to come and try to eat away once this thing begins to come up. You do what you can to, to scare them away so they don't eat your harvest, right? So even during the time of increase, you're, you're, you're involved in, in watching over the field and in making sure your harvest is coming. And then when the harvest comes, when that corn is ready to be plucked, when that those tomatoes are hanging there nice, red, and juicy, see on the vine when that watermelon mm, I like watermelon when that watermelon is is ripe and ready when those those the squash and the zucchini when they're when they're ready you don't just sit back and and say well I, I wonder I wonder when that squash is going to be here uh, in, in the kitchen sink so I can wash I wonder I wonder a farmer doesn't plant this the fields and then sit back in his house at harvest time around his pool, sipping on his sweet tea and expecting what's in the field to bring itself to the barn. You say, well, that's silly. Of course not, pastor. But that's the approach many of us have taken with the harvest we're believing for from God. We plant the seed. And we're just wondering, why isn't the harvest coming? And sometimes it's not a delay of time. Sometimes the reality is the fields are white, ready to be harvested. But we are waiting for it to be automatic. And we haven't learned how to put the sickle in. And we haven't learned how to reap. Oh, hallelujah. How many want to, how many want to learn how to reap? Well, first you got to know these basics. Number one, reaping's not automatic. Number two, reaping, somebody say it with me, is our responsibility. Can you say that again? Reaping is our responsibility. And then here's the third thing, and we're going to bring this home tonight. Reaping requires faith. Mm. It takes faith to sow, but it also takes faith to reap. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. I said it takes faith to sow, but it also takes faith to reap. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. Let me read it from the Amplified. He who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. Mm. What does that mean? It means if we're waiting for everything to be easy, we'll never sow. 
But it also says if we're waiting for everything to be easy and wonderful, we'll never reap. Just as it takes faith to do the sowing, it requires faith to do the reaping. Just as it takes your effort in the sowing, it takes your effort in the reaping. Just as it takes your expectation that what you're sowing will produce a harvest, it takes your expectation that now it's harvest time and I'm going to put in the sickle and I'm going to reap. Come on. I don't know if you're, if you're sensing the witness of the Spirit, but let me just declare again, 2019 is the fruitful year. Yeah. Hallelujah. But you and I've got to go into it with an expectation. We've got to go into it understanding that we have a responsibility to do the reaping. Can I just can I just tell you we're believing God around here. We're believing God around here for every seat to be filled every service. We're believing God around here for that the word of the Lord is that is going to get uncomfortable in this sanctuary. Hallelujah. I mean in this sanctuary. Before we move, before we get into our next sanctuary, here when, when I'm believing God for 2019's fruitfulness, before I'm believing God for the million dollars, before I'm believing God for the $10 million and, uh, and all the provision, before I'm believing God for that, I'm believing God for this, that this house we're in right now, this facility is just going to get so crammed with men and women and boys and girls that are hungry for God and God's, God's wrecking their life and fixing their life. And come on, hallelujah, that it's going to just be uncomfortable in here, not just once in a while, but weekly. And our, so our, our prayer has been, God, we're asking you to fill every seat Every service. I mean, even Wednesday night. Even Monday night prayer gathering. Every seat, every service. Hallelujah. Now, if we really want to reap that kind of harvest, then we've got to keep sowing the right seed. Hallelujah. And, and in sowing the right seed, it, wouldn't we be fooled? Even if we've sown the seed. So we've been praying. We've been sowing the seed of prayer, sowing the seed of declaration, watering it, believing God for it, dancing about it, rejoicing over the prophetic words. But if we aren't taking responsibility for the harvest. So what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, are we just sitting back waiting for it to happen automatically? Who have you invited? Who have you brought with you? Mm. We'll get in quiet now. What are you doing actively in the sowing of the seed and then putting in the sickle to bring in the heart? What are we doing? Or do we have an automatic mentality? Well, God's going to do it. Why? Hallelujah. Mm. You see, it's easy to fall into that mentality where we're just waiting for God to do it. God gives the increase of the seed we sow, but we are the reapers. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. We've got to, to believe and reap it. And you say, well, it just hasn't been, you know, it's been cloudy. It hasn't been favorable conditions. Hmm. I, I, I'm going to do it, Pastor. We're going to do it. We're going. We're going to get out there on the street, and we're going to. We're going to witness to people, and we're. We're going to. We're going to be more aggressive in outreach, and we're going to do that. It just hasn't been favorable yet. He who observes the wind, and waits for all conditions to be favorable, will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. The New Living Translation of Ecclesiastes 11.4 reads this way. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. Whew. I lost my amens about, about two minutes ago. Come on. People who continually look at negative conditions become discouraged. They get weary. I'm, I mean, I've done it. You've done it. We've, we've looked at the negative. We've got, to, we've got to refuse. Come on. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, don't allow yourself to get fatigued. Doing what is right. Doing what is good. The harvest is coming. Do you believe the harvest is coming? Yeah. 
I said, do you believe the harvest is coming? Come on. How many are ready to say, Lord, 2019 is my year of abundant harvest. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Look with me at Jeremiah 17. Hallelujah. Is this blessing anybody besides me? I was happy when I started, but I preach myself really happy right now. Look, look. Look, look at, look at verse eight. Well, read verse seven because it's, it is the foundation for verse eight. Blessed is the man or the woman, the people who trust in the Lord. Do I have any of those blessed people in here? And whose hope is the Lord. That word hope literally in the Hebrew is security. Our security is not in our bank accounts. Our security is not in our house or our car. Our security is in the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So we're, so when we save, we're not saving, sowing to the flesh out of fear for tomorrow. Cause if you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. Hallelujah. You've seen some people, they just saving for a rainy day and they always get those rainy days. And they think, they think they're just being wise, but if they're doing it in fear, they're creating their rainy future. I don't mean rain in the positive. I mean storms. I mean troubles. They're creating their troubles because they're laying stuff aside for that trouble when it comes. I'm losing some amens. Hallelujah. I, I believe in saving. I believe we got to get better at it. But how many would lift your hand and say, God, let everything I do be done in faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. Faith is what pleases God. Faith is what gets the results that we're believing for. So our hope is in the Lord. Our trust is in the Lord. And look at verse eight. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and watch it will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green. And these people will not be anxious, fearful in the year of drought. Watch, nor will they cease from yielding fruit. My God, did you get that? That means even when the conditions aren't favorable, you'll still be reaping a harvest. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Even when everybody else is not reaping, we'll still be reaping. Yes. Hallelujah. If our faith is in the Lord, if we keep in faith, stay in faith, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you ready? Now you got to understand this. You, you got to get this. I believe with all of my heart that we're going to see amazing things in 2019. Don't let one of us enter into 2019 and there be circumstances that are drought-like in our life. There be constriction and difficulty. And the enemy comes to us and says, that fruitful year stuff, that wasn't from God. Whew. This has been the toughest, toughest time I've had. And Hallelujah. Now, I'm not prophesying it's going to be the toughest time. I believe it's going to be the most glorious year. Hallelujah, we've seen. But, but you've, got, you've got to have such faith that even if there's a season in the year, even if there's some weeks in the year, even if there's some moments, even if there's some circumstances in the year to come that, that don't look favorable, they don't feel favorable, looks like everything's falling apart, you're still going to stand and say, I, I'm just going to stand on Jeremiah 17 verse say, my trust is in the Lord. My security is the Lord. So even in the heat, even in the heat of the moment, the heat of the day, even in the storms of life, and when there's drought all around me, I am not going to stop yielding fruit. Come on, somebody lift your hand and say, it's my fruitful year. And I'm going to reap a harvest of God's blessing no matter what the circumstances are. Let me bring this hallelujah. Let me bring this home. What does that mean? That means that means this, beloved. It means if if in 2019, I don't, I'm not prophesying that it's going to happen, but if in 2019 there were to be an economic downturn, which would make some, some Democrats very happy. 
But if <laughs> uh, you didn't appreciate my little humor there. But if in 2019 there, there were to be a, a, a strong economic downturn, that doesn't have anything to do with the word of the Lord. Yeah. That 2019 is the fruitful year. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not prophesying that's going to happen. I'm just saying our faith has got to be in the word and not in the circumstances that we see. We don't need favorable winds to do what God's called us to do. Because somebody, somebody hear me. When you step out in faith and stay in faith and commit to faith, you change the atmosphere. You change it. Hallelujah. You make it different when you step into it. So the clouds look bad. Oh, it's going to, it's going to storm. It's going to rain. I remember, uh, I, I remember being with brother hall and he was about a year before his passing. So he's 80 years old fighting with a sickness, but he kept going preaching five nights a week when other people would have, would have, would have been in a hospital bed. He kept going. He couldn't stand, but he, when he couldn't stand, he'd sit. But he was preaching the gospel and five nights every week. And so on a Friday night, Margie and I drove from Asheville over the mountain to Johnson City. And we were in a service with him. And, uh, and he was blessed that we were there. And we were blessed to be there. And, and God moved. After the service, he, Brother Hall liked to stay at the church in the facility. He didn't like hotel rooms. Didn't want to stay in people's homes. He would, but, but he liked to have just a place to sleep. Very humble man. And, and so they had him a little place. And Margie and I went over and had a little meal with, with Brother Hall and the team afterwards. And, and then Brother Hall went and lay down in his bed. And I went back there. And for, I guess, Margie, it was about an hour or so. Just Brother Hall and I sitting back there. He's laying in his bed. And he's just talking to me. And came to the end of that conversation. And I said, Brother Hall, I, I need to go. He said, son, you going to be here tomorrow night? I said, no, sir, I'm sorry. I can't be back tomorrow night. Had another engagement. But I said, but you know, Brother Hall, they're calling for snow in this area, some, a serious amount of snow. And it came. Uh, I said, they're calling for snow. I said, I, knowing he was weak, Caleb was just so tired and just laying there and fighting that sickness. I said, Brother Hall, they're calling for some real snow tomorrow evening. Uh, if it, what are you going to do? Are you going to have service? Or are you going to cancel? And he looked up to me, at me and gave me a word that changed my life. He said, son, we never look for a reason not to. We always look for a reason too. Uh, mm. In other words, you see, we have this tendency, especially in this generation, because things have been more comfortable for us than for past generations. Things have come easier to us than to past generations. So there's, there's somewhat of an entitlement mentality. And if, it, if it's tough at all or rough at all, even in the church, we've been, we've been fed this idea that if it's tough and rough, it means you missed God somehow. I don't think Joseph's going to believe that. I don't think Paul's going to believe that. I, come on. I don't think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are going to believe that, having been thrown in the fiery furnace. But you, come on. You know what I'm talking about? So we've, we've got this idea. And so we look out and we see it's cloudy. Oh, well, I don't know. There's a storm brewing. I, I think we better, we better stay in. We better, we'll reap that heart. Hopefully tomorrow it'll be sunny day. And, and, and if it's not, we'll, we just better stay. Hey, you know what I'm talking about. Get a few, a few snowflakes. And, and I mean, just a few little snowflakes. And there's no bread and there's no milk in the grocery store. And hallelujah, we've not had, you know, how long's it been since we even uh, were two or three days stuck at home? But everybody just panic mode and go get all that and just sit there and, oh, I saw a little flurry. I saw a little flurry. I guess, whoo, they're going to cancel school and everything's going to be, like, hallelujah, just, <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but if we have that mentality where harvest is concerned, 
will never reap the harvest. You can't wait till the sun's shining and it's a nice, perfect temperature day. No, it's harvest time. And God needs some people that'll say, I've got seed in the ground and God said he's increasing it and he's bringing me a harvest. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be ready for the harvest. I hope you caught that phrase that changed my life. And I hope you'll let it change yours. Son, we don't look for a reason not to. We always look for a reason to. The Bible says in Proverbs that a man who, who checks out the sky will never harvest. A man who, who wants to make sure that everything's perfect will not only not plant, but he won't harvest even what he has planted. And so we can't live making excuses, waiting for better days. We got to rise up and and do something today. The number one thing you need to do is make sure you're right with God. Make sure you're in right relationship. The scripture says in Isaiah 1 19, he who is willing and obedient will eat the good of the land. You want to eat the good of the land? You got to be willing to surrender your life to Christ, but not only willing to surrender, you're obedient. You're surrendering right now. And you're not only willing to do what God wants, but you're going to follow through and do what God wants. And you're not just doing it out of duty, but you're willing. You're doing it out of a delight. And that comes from a heart change. So right now, I want to ask you to pray with me. You can make Jesus Lord of your life. Backslider, come home right now. Today is the day of salvation. There's not another day. There's not a better day. Today is your day. So Father, in the name of Jesus, will you just pray this? Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come live big in me. Be the Lord of my life. I surrender to you. And I give myself to you today. In Jesus' name. Now, if you just believe and pray, God's going to do a miracle in your life right now. You can contact us. I've got a booklet I'd like to send to you called This New Life. So, the information's on the screen. I want to hear from you this week. And I'd love to get to meet you. Come visit us at the Lift Church in Sevierville, Tennessee. We'd love to have you worship with us. It'd be great to shake your hand and to get to know you. So I want to ask you to do that. Love to see you. Let me know you've been watching. Until next week, remember Jesus is Lord. Let him be the Lord of your life.